The Ukrainian military was amazed by everything behind enemy lines. In particular, they were surprised by how quickly the invaders could dig in, bring up their reserves, and also by the fact that they had different types of troops. This was stated by the deputy commander of the 97th Battalion of the 60th Separate Mechanized Brigade, Ivan Medvedyuk, in an interview with Ukraine Form. Everything was striking. That is, they entered brazenly, like, look, you should already be greeting us. We are already here. Yes, they dug in very quickly, immediately pulled up their reserves, ammunition, food. They had all of that. There were different types of troops. In the Kharkov direction, there were Buryats and private companies such as Rusishi GUR men. Their special forces were very noticeable there. Then when we ran into them, we heard someone talking and we decided to go and have a look because they were standing on our road where we were walking. When we approached there, it was very interestingly done. There were burrows dug, dugouts made for two to three people. They were filled with logs. There was a layer laid between the logs and the ground and then paved with straw and hay, the soldier noted. According to Medvedyuk, all this indicated that the Russian occupiers were prepared and knew what they were doing. He added that the special forces did everything thoughtfully and camouflaged themselves, while the LNR and the DNR could steal everything they saw from the locals. We did not find any garbage, cigarettes or cigarette butts around those dugouts. They had dug up the area. They collected the garbage and immediately buried everything, camouflaged it. That is, it was the special forces that were sitting there. And where the LPR and DPR were already stationed, there were also those, a gypsy camp. They stole everything, dragged it off. The locals said they took everything, pots, bathhouses. And when the Russian guard came out, when the bridges were blown up, they left the LPR and DPR. They did not consider them their own. Those were separate. That is, they got there through fields, forests, ran away. Oh, help me. That's what the kind of coordination they had. That is, each unit for itself. Yes, they had some kind of interaction. But when they were hit on the back of the head, each one got out on his own, added the deputy battalion commander of the 60th OMBR. The Ukrainian army is under threat of encirclement in the district of Kurakovo in the Donetsk region, Build analyst Julian Ropk reports. Russian troops advanced to the Kurakovo reservoir from the northeast and southwest, capturing the village of Maximovka. Due to the lack of reserves and defensive lines, the Ukrainian armed forces may fall into a trap and, probably, will be forced to retreat from 20 populated areas to the southeast of Andrivka, Ropk writes. Irlower he noted that in early October, Russian troops broke through from Mariinka and reached the shores of the Kurakovsko Reservoir, and captured the city of Ukrainsk to the north. According to Ropk, a semi-cauldron with the center in Kurakovka formed between these two directions, which the Russian armed forces have now completely captured. According to him, in two weeks the Russians occupied six villages and 50 square kilometers of territory in this area. Ropk also noted that at the same time the Russian army is approaching the Kurakovka Reservoir from the southwest, from near Volodar, where it captured five villages and about 200 square kilometers of territory in two weeks. The front line is currently near the village of Maximovka, 15 kilometers from the reservoir and the city of Kurakovo. In the southeastern direction, the village of Katerinovka, 12 kilometers from Kurakovo, has been taken, summed up Repki. In a report published on November 1st, analysts from the U.S. Institute for the Study of War reported that in the Kurakovo direction, the Russians had advanced to the southwestern administrative borders of the village of Kurakovka, northeast of Kurakovo and had likely captured the settlement. At the same time, ASW noted that Ukrainian forces had recently regained positions in the wooded area southwest of Pobeda and southeast of Kurakovo. According to analysts, the Russians have also advanced near Maximilianivka, Novoselodivka, Maximivka, and Vovchenka in Donetsk region, as well as near Verbov in Zaporizhia region. Russian occupation forces have occupied the village of Stepanovka in the Kramatorsk district of Donetsk region. 
In addition, tactical advancement of the enemy is observed in the village of Kolesnikovka in the Kharkov region and in the areas of Kremenea Baka in the Donetsk region. Russian forces have also managed to regain their position near Sheptakivka in Kursk region. Israel could provide captured Hamas and Hezbollah weapons, many of Russian, Chinese and Iranian origin, to Ukraine, according to Amir Wheatman, chairman of the Liberals in the Israeli governing Likud party. While Israel has largely limited its support for Ukraine to humanitarian aid and early warning systems, avoiding military assistance due to concerns over Russia's reaction, some politicians are now suggesting a more assertive approach. Israel doesn't need them that much. Shipping some to Ukraine would be a good idea, and we could probably do this soon, Wheatman told Euromaidan Press in an interview. He emphasized that Ukraine and Israel face a common adversary, a coalition including Russia, China, North Korea and Iran, along with their proxies. Russia needs to be punished and finished. We need to show Putin's regime that aggression bears a price. The West has a collective responsibility to support Ukraine and Israel against these enemies, he said. While the Israeli government remains cautious about deeper Ukraine involvement, fearing increased Russian support for Israel's enemies, Wheatman argues for a stronger stance. It's crucial for Israel to help Ukraine as circumstances allow. We must show our enemies, including Russia, that attacking us or supporting those who do comes at a price. He noted. It should be noted that tensions between Russia and Israel have been increasing recently. Even retired U.S. Army Colonel Lawrence says that Israel's attack on Iran was bogged down because the Russians were. He said IDF pilots encountered an unfamiliar electronic system as they approached Tehran, so they turned around and called off the second and third waves of air attacks. Those hot-blooded pilots in their F-35s and F-15s didn't fly, and they planned to. They planned to suppress the enemy's air defenses and then attack with aircraft at closer range and therefore with greater accuracy. But they didn't because they were confused by what they saw on their screens and were afraid of being shot down. All I can say is that the Russians were there and made the Iranians look pretty scary, Wilkerson said. The retired colonel added that the Israeli pilots crossed the air border of Jordan and Iraq without receiving official permission to fly from the governments of these countries. Recall on the night of October the 26th, the Israeli Air Force nevertheless carried out a raid on Iran, hitting a number of targets in the vicinity of Tehran. The air defense forces of the Islamic Republic entered the battle, destroying, as reported, most of the enemy bombs and missiles. 